afternoon. This is the Cop Shop, and I'm Chief Steve Hebby. Uh, this week, I'm joined by Captain Kyle Dowdy, uh, our our regular stand-in. Uh, PIO Nicole Brown is off with a family emergency, so we have our in our thoughts today. But um, Kyle, uh, you've been on this show at least once before. Uh, yeah, a couple times. And you're you're hardly a shy person, so <laughs> no, I, depends I, who you talk to. Would actually, yeah, <laughs> well, I can't find one that thinks yeah, you're a shy sure, person. I, I can't so. Either, so. <laughs> So we figured Kyle will spruce this up a little bit. Uh, it's the last show that we'll do here in November. And so it's, uh, coming up on the holidays and big times, uh, we start with our um, our Black Friday and shopping detail that we do every year. Um, unlike California, um, we actually do aggressively target shoplifters and try and make arrests. And so what are we doing this year, Kyle? Yeah, so you, you alluded to the California connection with that, you know, going on in San Francisco that was crazy hopefully that'll never happen here but yeah we're gonna have uh, multiple officers out there enforcing all kinds of laws and ordinances but we're really gonna be focusing on shoplifting uh, you know it's Black Friday uh, all the shopping season is now started so we're going to be uh, heavily concentrated around the business districts so you'll see extra patrols out you'll see people uh, in the stores extra police officers in the stores as well as uh, extra police units driving around town like I said, we'll be enforcing everything, but we'll be focusing uh, mainly on shoplifting. And this is something we've done, uh, well, every year that I've been here, but I think the, the FPD was doing it for years before I got here. Yeah, probably 20 years you've probably been doing it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, something I think most of our citizens are aware of. Um, hopefully the citizens that would, would think about stealing are aware of it and, and decide not to do that is kind of the goal of it. Yeah, and, and honestly, um, you know, it's been a difficult probably year and a half, we'll say two years, rounded up, and I think some people are starting to emerge, you know, from the pandemic and maybe have a little extra spending cash. Maybe this Black Friday is going to be a lot more uh, shopping intensive than the last one was, and so we just want to be cognizant of, you know, keep keep your yourself and your belongings safe, make sure you lock your cars when you're shopping, make sure you hide all your valuables, uh, put things in the trunk that you don't want to be seen. Um, if you're going to be parking uh, for any extended period of time, obviously lock your doors. Don't don't be an easy target. Don't be an easy victim. Um, although we will be out there enforcing a bunch of stuff, we can't be everywhere all at once. So uh, you being able to help us and being an extra set of eyes and ears for us definitely is going to help. So if you see something suspicious, you know, call in. You see people checking door handles in parking lots, things of that nature. Uh, give us a call, and and hopefully we'll you guys will be a force multiplier for us. And we'll be able to kind of cut down on some shopliftings and other crimes this year. Auto burg is definitely a popular sport uh, this time <laughs> of year. Um, so, so the captain's right. You know, hiding your belongings, but uh, not leaving your purse. And don't leave guns uh, in the car. Those are things that the, the police department during the course of a year take a lot of reports on. A lot of theft from vehicles, but it's particularly. Uh, bad during this time of year when when people are actually hitting the stores more and they have have valuables that they're leaving in there while they're going into the store and I'll, and I'll say that to your to your home too so you know lock your doors at home obviously you know there's gonna be porch pirates out there this year you're gonna have your Amazon shopping that you're trying to get done for Black Friday uh, and you may be receiving packages and maybe you're not gonna be there when those packages arrive so just have a plan to have those packages either put into a safe place or maybe a trusted neighbor or friend or coworker or somebody can take those pass packages and put them out of view of the public uh, just so you don't become a victim of you know getting your your own home you know vandalized or broken into so people uh, would be stealing stuff that you you've purchased for christmas this year well, that is definitely uh, on the on the radar for the fpd and like the captain said you know we appreciate calls if you see anything suspicious call in um, we we have officers available well we'll come over we'll figure out what's going on if nothing's going on it's not a big deal uh, then the, the person moves on and, and we've just made sure that things are going right. But if something is going on, you know, you you don't want to have thought, oh, I should have called the police afterwards. Um, so we're, we're out here. We're eager to have you call us and, and we'll have extra officers deployed uh, over the next couple of weeks uh, to address that. Some of the other stuff going on, it's been uh, busy nationally um, uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial in Wisconsin. Um, was a fixation for many people uh, on both sides of the issue um, across across the country, and that wrapped up last week. Um, he was acquitted on all charges in that case, and that was a tough one, uh, Kyle. Because you know, on on the one hand, I guess I I thought both. I thought on the one hand he shouldn't have been there, and uh, that's not a place for a 17-year-old with an AR-15. Then on the other hand, I thought, uh, geez, 
hitting a guy with a gun uh, with a skateboard as he's laying on the ground and then pointing a gun at him probably moves you towards self-defense. And that's exactly where I'm at, too. Um, two, two excellent points. Should a 17-year-old be patrolling the streets of a, a, a riot, and for lack of a better word, as close as that kid's probably going to see to a war zone, you know, should you just unleash a 17-year-old with an AR-15? Um, you know, that's debatable. But then again, so then when somebody comes into contact with him, should they be allowed to do whatever they want to him um, just because he's a 17-year-old with an AR? So um, it's unfortunate because events like that are completely avoidable. And, you know, if we could just somehow, some way, you know, make this clear distinction between uh, peaceful demonstration and then the next step, which is what, you know, many last year took was the next step. And we are all about peaceful demonstration in this country. Our military is about it. Our government's about it. Our police department's about it. Uh, you're never going to see the department's police department, you know, speak ill of people who are peacefully protesting. That, that's part of your constitutional rights. And then you take the next step, though, and, and then you start looting and you start rioting and you start causing damage to property and damage to people, which is what happened in this one. And then it just becomes a difficult situation for, for everyone to deal with. And, you know, fortunately, we haven't seen too many of those in Farmington, especially not in my tenure here. Um, and hopefully we continue to remain calm in this in this area, in this county, and, and demonstrate peacefully and then uh, get our points across without getting violent. Well, and we did have some protests here last year we did. Um, in the summer, and I thought those were, were well conducted by the people involved. Um, and they, at least in the, the biggest of them, they were communicative with us at the FPD. Um, partially, they were worried that something would happen to them. Uh, and they're not wrong. And so part of our mission as a police department is to is to preserve and protect their right to, to stand out and protest the government. Ironically, even uh, protesting police abuse. But they're going to be protected by the police as they do it. And um, he, I was proud of the way our community handled it on both sides of the issue. Uh, there, was, there was protests on both sides. And in the end, it was all peaceful and people moved on. Uh, what you didn't see in, in Kenosha, unfortunately, was, was peaceful protesting. So, uh, you know, the, the first question I asked is, should a 17-year-old be out there with an AR-15? I don't think so. Uh, but on the other hand, should people be out there burning and looting and, uh, and uh, vandalizing and then attacking other people? And absolutely, they should not. So how we, we had a rough year and a half oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, as a country. And, you know, we're, we're a long way away from each other. Which, which we've talked about on this show, and that that's, um, it's not conducive to anything that we stand for. You know, when we can't even talk to each other, we can't listen to each other's points, when we think the, the worst of, of everyone on the other side of the issue. Uh, you know, honestly, sometimes liberals are right. Sometimes conservatives are right. Uh, but we, we can't really bring ourselves to say that very often anymore. Well, it's just become frustrating for me because, you know, it seems like this political divide has now turned into a social divide where you're right, we can't even talk to each other as neighbors, as friends, as peers, as coworkers. Everything's, you're either for me or you're against me. Right. No middle road, no common ground. And, and it seems like those that are, um, you know, moderates are, are maybe, you know, losing more and more favor because they're uh, being accused from both sides of not taking a stand, right. not being vocal in support of one side or the other. And, and, and honestly, I mean, I'm not really a centrist, but I'm not far from it. And I don't necessarily think that exactly like you said, that everybody's wrong every time or everybody's right every time. And that's kind of where we're getting to more and more is, is I'm right and you're wrong versus like, hey, maybe we're both a little bit right. We've just lost that sense of uh, cooperation and communication. Uh, and it's now just become shouting and violence. Well, and I definitely am a centrist when we're in uniform. Oh, absolutely. Oh, the police no department represents yeah. all our citizens. Yep. Um, and so when you're talking, you're, you're exactly right. People, people on both sides of these issues want us to take their side. And that is not the role of the police department. And it puts us in, really in a miserable spot where we are losing. Um, we have people on, on all sides unhappy because we're taking the middle ground. So on the masks, which is, you know, COVID continues to, to plague us. Um, I participated in um, a forum with the, with the hospital recently and uh, you know i was reading a few of the comments and one of them was you know my my duty as a police chief is to enforce the constitution and uh, you know that that's always a statement that's loaded and it almost always means 
mm, protect the Constitution by defending what I want you to defend. Yeah, your version of the Constitution. Right. Yeah. And also, from my perspective as a police chief, we do enforce the law, whatever the law is, and that's passed by the legislature and then what the rulings are by the court. And so far, uh, you have not had a court in New Mexico that has ruled that the governor's mask mandate is um, has gone too far. Now, we'll see on, on the national level with the, with the testing mandate uh, whether or not uh, the Biden administration's new rules for coming through OSHA is going to be constitutional or not. And there is a pause on those. Um, but not in New Mexico right now. We we are supposed to have, be wearing masks. So enforcing the Constitution, in my mind, is oh, we'd be enforcing the laws that the legislature passed and that the courts have ruled on. But that's not what people want us to do. No. And, and you know, the beautiful thing about the Constitution is it is such a live, open document. I mean, it's being ratified and amended all the time. So if you're talking about the Constitution in the strict sense of the word, I mean, we're not necessarily going to only enforce things that were enacted, you know, in 1780. Um, there's been, you know, drastic changes uh, in society since then. Masks are one of them. Masks are one of them. Technology is one of them. Yeah. Right. You know, search warrants for cell phones. The founding fathers didn't have any idea about those and they didn't need to. So, you know, the strict constitutionalists, like, well, I can understand and appreciate their point. Um, we've evolved as a society, especially as a nation. And now you're dealing with things such as masks, which the founding fathers never had to deal with. Um, so should we enforce the mandate? Absolutely, because it's the law. Once it stopped being the law, should we stop enforcing it? Absolutely, because it's not the law. So this view that we're the police for everyone sometimes will translate into the, you're my police. You're the police for me, which isn't necessarily the case because there's so many different opinions on the public health orders, for instance, right. that you can't really, um, as, as a you know, maybe a conscientious objector to the masks. You can't really say we shouldn't be enforcing the masks. What you're really saying is just don't enforce it on me, which you don't really care if somebody else is not wearing their mask and just, just don't write me a citation or don't target me for any kind of, you know, um, action by the police. But like I said, I can appreciate that. And, and I don't love, you know, going out there and, you know, talking about masks with people who aren't wearing masks. And I don't particularly take joy in talking to people who are wearing masks about other people that aren't wearing masks. No. So yes, you can point them out to me and say, well, that guy's not wearing a mask. What are you going to do about it? Right. Well, that's, that's tougher for the police. Um, there's things we can do about it. And, and then there's things that you want us to do that maybe we can't do. Well, and, and you want us to do it on this issue at this moment. But over enforcement by the police over the last year and a half seems to be <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, a constant subject of criticism for the police. Um, but now there's there's some great enthusiasm to really have us go out there and aggressively enforce the governor's mandate. You know, I, I think the best, uh, w and I think really the PD has done a good job of, of avoiding controversy. Uh, as a community, we have done a good job of wearing our masks and, and our officers do wear their PPE when they're out um, on call still. Um, but Somewhere, you know, now you're getting the you're getting the other side, the the pro mask mandate and the pro vaccination people that are becoming more aggressive, right? And so we'll see how the courts rule on on this this that you either have to be tested every week or you have to be vaccinated, one or the other. And and I see the comments too that that expect the police department is going to somehow aggressively f force people to get vaccines. Uh, through the government and we'll see what the courts rule mm -hmm. but I, I'm telling you I, I can't see my officers are going to be holding people down so, uh, so that somebody else can jab a needle in them you know we're going to have to come to something a little more um, a little more moderate as a response yeah I mean like you said the last year and a half you know people have been uh, vocally in opposition to what the police have been doing and honestly in a lot of places rightfully so sure. we have made a lot of mistakes throughout our history as a profession no doubt about it um, that would be the next mistake we did if we're forcefully holding people down while they're being, you know, forced to be vaccinated, right? It's my body, my choice until it's, you know, not my body, my choice, you know, according to some right. law or, or regulation. And, you know, I'm vaccinated. Uh, I have no problem saying I'm vaccinated. I wear a mask, yep. a mask out. I have a child who was immunocompromised. So I understand people's concern about that. But that's still a personal choice for me. Um, I have members in my family, in my household that, you know, weren't vaccinated. Um, and it's not... Uh, an issue for me of, you know, is, is this a political question, right? The, the issue for me is that is it a personal choice based on your health care provider and your discussion about what's right for your family and yourself. So no. it shouldn't be a political issue. No, I'll say this too. The, this Delta variant is, um, at least anecdotally in my experience, is, is far more contagious. Uh, so the police department definitely has had more officers 
in the last three or four months test positive for uh, for COVID than we did the first year and a half that, that this thing was running. Uh, so officers are testing positive for it. Whether they're vaccinated or not, uh, we're getting them testing positive. Also, I, I write condolence cards, and I talked about this on the forum. I write condolence cards for citizens in our community, uh, but also for police officers that die in the line of duty, uh, something that their families have, that, that their, their sacrifice isn't forgotten. And the number that I've done for COVID is, is way up. And more ominously, the number that are for people in their 40s and 50s. So officers that, you know, the first, the first variant we were hearing, it was all they had some sort of underlying medical condition. Now they're just, they're getting younger. It, it's, it's many more than it was the first go round. And it's hard to deny those facts. So I am vaccinated too. I, I know that I'm gonna die at some point in life. I, I'm not in a hurry to have that happen. And I can tell you, I don't want it to be from COVID. Uh, so I did get vaccinated. And, you know, and then they're dealing with this surge in the schools right now where, you know, you're probably, if you're listening to this and you're a school teacher or a school employee, uh, you, you're feeling our frustration with younger kids are getting it now. And it's, and it is becoming more, um, uh, I don't know about contagious, but it's definitely the side effects are becoming more. There's a lot more long-term side effects that I'm hearing about. And again, that's anecdotally, I'm not a medical professional by any stretch of the imagination, but Kids, kids are getting it. Younger people are getting it, and the effects are lasting longer. Uh, and it's just, it just should not be a political issue. And I think we politicize it so much right now. It's to the point of, again, you're either with us or you're against us. You, you can't be on, you know, this side of the political specter and have a vaccine, and you can't be on this other side, you know, and not be vaccinated. And you've so. actually seen some actual rioting and, and violent oh, yeah. rioting in Europe over this very issue. Unbelievable. And we start putting people into camps of, uh, you know, vaccinated and unvaccinated. And um, it, it's it's been a rough year and a half. That said, you know, let's transition to something else that's contagious, and that's poor football play. Poor football. Yeah, uh, so the Bills and the Packers, I'm assuming, is what we're talking about? Uh, well, not the Packers. <laughs> oh, yeah, not the Packers. The Packers are 8-3 and, three and <laughs> suffer, suffered a wave of injuries. But uh, how are the Bills doing, Scott? Can we talk about something else? <laughs> <laughs> Who did they play yesterday? I wow. Um, on Sunday? Or, or let's Sunday. see. Yeah. yeah um, boy, I don't even know. It was just so, so the Colts. awful. Oh, Thank they did you. play the well, yeah. Yes. Colts are not a bad team. No. Um, uh, so, yeah. But that's... as a long-suffering Bills fan, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all I can say. I'm afraid the Packers have had two healthy years, and we made the NFC Championship game two, two years in a row. And this year, although we still have a lot of talent, uh, we've had a number of significant injuries. It was it was a good game Sunday against the Vikings, uh, but it did not end well. And you know, I'm not a fan of purple ever, and and I am particularly not a fan of purple this week. So, oh, the Cardinals are doing good, and they're not healthy. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that out. Really? There. How are the Falcons? Uh, the Falcons have had better really? days. Oh, better really? days. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, you know, when we choose a winning team, to, you know, then it makes it easy to always be a winner. You yeah, know, that's I think it is. It's kind of Kyle's style. Although my sons are the second best team in the NBA the, behind the Warriors. They are. The second best behind the who? The Warriors. The reigning, defending national champion, Milwaukee Bucks. No, they're not. Oh. The Bucks are terrible this year. Are, are the Bucks the defending champ? Oh. They're the defending champ. Oh. The so belt like, is there. So it was, you know, we went up 2-0, and then we got maybe a little sidetracked and distracted. The wash was the 4-0 <laughs> no, that followed. <laughs> and then Bucks we lost 4 in six, row. baby. Bucks, Bucks and six. six. The Suns and 4 was a lot better. I like yeah. that channel out really? against uh, the Nuggets. Well, yeah. Don't get to hear it anymore. No, not anymore. We're on an 11-game winning streak, though. Or, uh, you know, actually, maybe it's 12 or 13. No. It's, it's at least 11. <laughs> paying, paying the refs doesn't really count as winning, <laughs> oh. but that's just beside the point. Good so, luck this year, though. Yes, we have uh, we have more serious news, but uh, it also correlates in with, with our Christmas parade, uh, which is coming up next week. Um, well, I'll be in it. I think, Scott, you're, you're the major celeb. One of the announcers, just one in a cog of... Really? Plenty, yes. Just n not the man, just no. a man. It's a team them. effort, Chief. Well, there. <laughs> team <laughs> effort, yes. Actually, hardly the truth. Scott is, uh, stands as a celeb by himself. Um, but uh, in Wisconsin, again, where I'm from, uh, and, and not far from Kenosha, Waukesha had an extreme tragedy at, at their um, Christmas parade. You know, yeah, and so you can have multiple layers of security, which it looked like they had there too, barricades, as well as police officers. Um, and unfortunately, for whatever reason, uh, that didn't stop what occurred. And you can never really 
you know, ultimately stop everything. Bad people are going to do bad things. And unfortunately, you can't stop them every time. But I just want to let the community know that there's definitely layers of protection that, that we have every parade we do, every event like that. Um, we are going to have the barricades out. We do have police officers both in uniform, uh, I'm sorry, in units and on foot. Everyone will be in uniform. Um, but we'll have vehicles, you know, hopefully protecting the people as well as officers uh, walking uh, the parade routes too. And that's always difficult with uh, the public who, who doesn't necessarily, um, you know, understand uh, what we're doing to keep them safe. You believe we're keeping you safe. You're hoping we're keeping you safe. But you don't get to see all the action plans we're creating, all of the um, um, incident briefings we're doing. Uh, all the stuff we do behind the scenes to make sure you guys are safe, just please, you know, continue to give us the benefit of the doubt and know that we're doing everything we can to keep you guys safe, even though maybe you don't hear about it as much. Uh, but we're definitely working hard behind the scenes. To keep Honestly, the best security is the ones you don't hear about because that means it, it really wasn't stressed. But this was a car that drove through a parade, killed, I think last time I saw, like five people and 40-some and were injured. Um, but it's also it also plays to something that FPD has done now for several years, um, just had the last two years, and that's our support of the Shiprock um, Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Shiprock Fair is a, a major event. Uh, when they have their, their parade, uh, we have FPD officers that go out there and participate, support the, the Navajo Police Department, which is stressed very thin um, during that event. And I've long said, look, you know, this is the, the major issue or, or event in the Four Corners area. They bring out just literally thousands and thousands of people that are just on the road, uh, you know, sitting up watching or, or on the road actually in the parade. And if something happened out there, FPD would be scrambling to get out there. So if we can provide on the front end some additional security like you're talking about to, to help cut down on a possible tragedy, and just whether it's a, a terrorist incident, which we've, which we've seen through the years, or it's a drunk driver or somebody who just gets lost, and, and they drive through the parade, they're going to kill dozens of people. And so FPD does participate in that Shiprock Fair, and that's, that's the biggest reason right there is, um, it, it is it is a major event in the Four Corners area. There are a lot of people who are, who are attending. We want to stay safe and have fun, um, but it takes protection behind the scenes, and that's what the FPD does. <clears throat> And it's difficult on parades because part of a successful parade is the interaction between the community right. and the people in the parade. So, you know, more barricades and more distance is obviously better for the police department. That makes us feel better and safer. But then you lose that interaction of the community to the floats, which is, you know, a main goal of, of the parade organize, organizers. So it's just one of those give and takes kind of got right. away security versus, you know, what's an acceptable amount of risk to make the parade, you know, enjoyable for everybody involved. You know, we've seen that same sort of debate too, security versus um, accessibility for presidents with yep. with their Secret Service, right? And and we've had some tragedies because really in, a, in the United States, the president is reasonably accessible, uh, especially during election years. But, um, but you're trying to balance that, right? Uh, between safe and, and yet accessible. And that, that is a tough, tough road to walk sometimes. Well, that's, that's really it for us. Um, we're glad you tuned in. We hope that you had a great Thanksgiving, and we hope that you're getting ready for a great Christmas. This is a, a fantastic time of year. You know, we're very proud to be here with you in Farmington and serving you, and we hope that you're safe and that your family's safe.
Brought 